welcome to our channel if you got to subscribe to our channel please subscribe to our channel and click on the bell button to get notified about the latest videos today in this video we are going to see about mitochondria let's get into the video let us begin with the word mitochondria the explanation or the origin behind the word mitochondria let me divide this word mitochondria into two parts the prefix mito and the suffix chondria the prefix mito means thread in greek and the suffix chondria as derived from the greek word chondros which means granule so mitochondria is nothing but a thread like granule suspended in the cytoplasm of an eukaryotic cell so this is the basic definition of mitochondria next we have the size of the mitochondria the size of mitochondria varies according to the work done by the cell in which the mitochondria is present mostly the shape of mitochondria is sausage shape or cylindrical shape the diameter varies from 0.2 to 1 micrometer and the length varies from 1 to 4.1 micrometer so that's all about the size parameters of mitochondria next we have the number of mitochondria present in each cell the number of mitochondria present in each cell varies depending upon the energy requirement of that particular cell that is for example let me take skeletal muscle cell these skeletal muscle cells work more so they require more amount of energy as a result of which these cells will have more amount of mitochondria compared to other normal cells present in other parts of the body and this number of mitochondria also varies according to the shuttle system used by the particular eukaryotic cell in which the mitochondria is present so what is a shuttle system a shuttle system is nothing but a transport system which transfers the electrons produced in the cytosol to the mitochondria and the electrons from mitochondria back to cytosol it also helps in the regeneration of nad plus that is the oxidized form of coenzyme nadh so this is the major role of shuttle system there are two types of shuttle systems glycerol aldehyde three phosphate shuttle system and malate aspartate shuttle system the ultimate production of atp from a single nadh molecule oxidized in case of the cells using the glycerol d3 phosphate shuttle system is 1.5 atp and in case of malate aspartate shuttle system it is about 2.5 atp so based on this shuttle systems also the number of mitochondria varies because this shuttle system produces varied amount of atp from the nadh and next we have the structure of mitochondria the mitochondria is a double membrane bound structure which includes the mitochondrial matrix at the center and the genetic material firstly the outermost covering of the mitochondria is the outer membrane it is composed of 40% of lipids and 60% of proteins so because of this composition only the outer membrane is freely permeable for most of the molecules and secondly we have the inner membrane of mitochondria this inner membrane is composed of 20% of lipids and 80% of proteins as a result of this composition this inner mitochondrial membrane is selectively permeable that is it allows only few molecules very few molecules to pass through for example the atp and nadh molecules cannot cross the inner mitochondrial membrane so only the shuttle system is used for nadh regeneration in cytosol and mitochondria and atp translocase enzyme is used for the atp transport between the mitochondria and the cytosol in this inner mitochondrial membrane a special type of chemical compound called as cardiolipins are present which helps in cellular respiration to a great extent and next we have the enzyme complexes present in the inner mitochondrial membrane so these enzyme complexes the series of enzyme complexes in the inner mitochondrial membrane together constitutes the electron transport chain or electron transport system so what is the function of electron transport chain embedded in the 
inner mitochondrial membrane. It helps in the oxidation of NADH produced in the respiratory pathways, for example, glycolysis, oxidative decarboxylation and Krebs cycle. And by the oxidation of this NADH, the electron released is transported through the enzyme complexes as a result of which the proton is transferred from the mitochondrial matrix to the intermembrane space that is the space present between the outer membrane and inner membrane it is also called as perimitochondrial space in some context so the proton gradient increases inside the inner mitochondrial intermitochondrial space and decreases inside the mitochondrial matrix so to stabilize this proton gradient the protons again enters the mitochondrial matrix through an enzyme complex called as ATP synthase enzyme complex when a proton moves through the ATP synthase enzyme complex it rotates the F1 particle or the rotary engine biochemical engine which ultimately produces the ATP molecules by harnessing the kinetic energy of this protons so this is the use of enzyme complexes embedded in the inner mitochondrial membrane which helps in the production of ATP which is the ultimate product of any respiratory metabolism. So next we have the cristae. Cristae is nothing but infoldings present in the inner mitochondrial membrane. The important role of cristae is to increase the surface area of the inner mitochondrial membrane and in the cristae we have the oxisomes protruding. These oxisomes are of two parts, end part and base part. The end part is the F1 particle and the base part is the F0 particle. This oxisome is nothing but the ATP synthase enzyme which we have already discussed in case of the electron transport system and this helps in the production of ATP molecules by the movement of protons through it. So next we have the mitochondrial matrix. The mitochondrial matrix have suspended RNA molecules 70S ribosome. An important thing about this 70S ribosome is that it is different from the common eukaryotic ribosome that is 80S ribosome. It is comparatively less denser and smaller to the eukaryotic ribosome. Many people may have a doubt what does this word yes mean. This word S yes means Swedberg unit or sedimentation coefficient. It is given to a specific ribosome based on the time taken by that ribosome to sediment when it is kept in a centrifuge. If it is more denser, it will take more more time to sediment. So only it is given the unit, Swedberg unit or sedimentation coefficient as yes. And next we have the enzymes for TCA cycle or the Krebs cycle present in the mitochondrial matrix that is the Krebs cycle enzymes are present in the mitochondrial matrix so only the Krebs cycle occurs in the mitochondrial matrix and next we have the single DS DNA the main genetic material of the mitochondria is also suspended in this mitochondrial matrix and it has I amount of GC that is guanine cytosine content. That's all about the mitochondrial matrix. Next let us discuss about the functions of mitochondria. It is called as the power house of the cell because it helps in the production of ATP by the electron transport chain and ATP synthase enzyme complex. It is also called as a biochemical factory because it is the ultimate area where all respiratory substrates will go will undergo final oxidation to release energy for example the carbohydrates amino acids and fats the beta oxidation of fat molecules or fatty acids also occurs in the mitochondria that's all about the function of mitochondria and finally we have to discuss about an important theory called as endosymbiotic theory this theory explains that how the mitochondria has evolved in the course of time and how this mitochondria is present in the eukaryotic cell. So if you see this mitochondria as many structures and organelles similar to the prokaryotic cell. This 70S ribosome is present only in case of prokaryotes and it is present also in mitochondria and it has its own genetic material that is the DS DNA or double stranded DNA. So it can make its own proteins to some extent. So only it is called as a semi-autonomous organelle but it cannot make its own 
metabolic pathways because some genes of this mitochondria have been deleted in the course of evolution along with the eukaryotic cell. So basically this mitochondria is believed to be a prokaryotic cell mostly an aerobic U bacteria which entered an anaerobic cell as a result of this entry of the aerobic U bacteria into an anaerobic cell. The entire cell became capable of making oxidation and eukaryotic cell is produced ultimately. This is called as endosymbiotic theory. So that's all about the mitochondria. If you want to know more about the cellular respiration, you can see our video of respiration which we have posted already in our YouTube channel. You can find the link of that video in the description given below. If you like this video, please like, share and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.